Coming up this week on Beyond the Vibe, we're joined by Richie Heavens and James Allen of the newly formed Misery Smile. <laughs> so now it's, it's, it's time to go out and actually try it in front of people now and wait you know, for the inevitable bottles that get thrown at you. <laughs> Last of them don't work. Right? Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, because normally I, I'm, it's kind of dirty, like bluesy stuff, but I've always liked all kinds of music, you know, so this is the bit just like almost breath of fresh air as well songs that people might actually like to sing along to <laughs> <laughs> and i think people just kind of want to have a good time again now you see the pictures of people in clubs and everybody's bouncing around and i think now is the time for sort of a rock band to come out that just kind of goes balls to the wall rock and roll fucking get a beer down bang here. your head get a beer <laughs> yeah get a beer bang your head and have a good fucking time and don't worry too much about what it's about mm. you know <laughs> the show that cuts deep into the world of music. My name is Aaron Day, lead guitarist of UK band Newsweek <laughs> Brewers, and I'm here with music videographer and photographer, <laughs> Mr. Ryan Beatty. It is, in a different room. Like? <laughs> we are, yes. Imagine if we were recording in the same room, but we just had a little spat. <laughs> yeah. So it was just, Ryan's really in this cupboard. Just yeah, there. that's it. Like, yeah, I just live there. It. It's a, and he's fine in there. I give him snacks. I give him fruit, and it's just enough oxygen for you to to just about get through the days. Now I think you pass out normally, mm. but that's that's I like Harry Potter. Time. Yeah, you know exactly, and, and just like Harry Potter, you deserve to be there. And and, and I think yeah, I think it actually actually helped his overall development. I think he, <laughs> it, he didn't take oh. things for granted. You know, so Ryan has got a bit of a cough mainly because of the asbestos in that cupboard. But we're. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's not the it's not the thing that everybody not, is panicking yeah, it's about. Not, it's not it's like not the, it's not that thing you might have heard. Yeah, of. yeah. it's not the scary thing. It's not the um, scary thing. Nah. Um, but it's been a, it's been an interesting win, Mr. Basically, because obviously I'm mm. I, like from my end, I've returned to gigging uh, pretty much. I had a first gig with uh, these with was away from home. Uh, the first gig not sitting down. Um, yes. that, was with, that was with crows on Friday, and we all we all had the good news as well that. Uh, the new wave of classic rock got top ten. Top ten. Top ten in the in the charts for the compilations. Um, yeah. And the gig the gig itself, man, was a bit of. I remember standing with Hartwell on the balcony <laughs> and, and looking down and kind of you know it's about a five hundred cap room the tip in Buckley, and mm. it made me think of of bands from what we speak about as kind of the first wave of rock and roll. You know, Blackstone Cherry, um, Heaven's Basement. You know, Roadstar, The Answer, um, mm. and to see you know crows on that level and the community in general you know with with that top 10 coming together it just felt like it was a bit of a, a bit of a moment like i felt a bit, felt a bit emotional man. you know just to just to see people we've not seen for a long time and and to see that hunger for live music and, and a development of bands i mean can you remember looking back at that seeing bands like black Sun cherry and how quickly they developed and grew in popularity yeah i mean i remember there was they kind of just exploded quite quickly mm. um but i from just watching them I, I remember thinking at the time they were kind of it was like well this is a band that's clearly been a bit of an underground band for a while perhaps you know like they've been killing it in these lower kind of smaller venues um but like yeah it, it, there's that whole energy thing with i remember particularly seeing yes. the old like videos and stuff there was like this real like energetic vibe with them, like a real hunger. Yeah, like um, it's constant, like it's like it's growing and it's active. Yeah, yeah. And and it, like you sent me um like a little clip, a little video right. thing um at the yeah. time, and I, I remember seeing um Shane doing doing this thing, and it was like yeah, you know, there's this there is this energy again. It's like like what you said is you can see that that kind of um that same hunger to you know to, to, they, they could be the next one to kind of explode up again yeah um, I, was, I was blown away by them man you know i thought i thought the crows were great i mean we don't get with them since this asylum gig with wolf jaw uh wolf jaw when they were the bad flowers which would mm. have been maybe four or five years ago which is mad you know so to see how quickly they, they've developed into being this this real powerhouse band is is incredible and i think it's interesting kind of with with today's guest in terms of that hunger because it's somebody that's 
that's previously been part of that first wave of rock and roll we talked about, you know, and has mm. progressed to, to a level maybe similar to where Crows are at now and is now starting again. And yeah. has that hunger all over again. And that is, of course, Mr. Mr. Richie Heavens of the now mm. Misery Smile. Yes. Um, of course, the first returning guest that we've ever had. Also the first guest we ever had. Um, <laughs> and he might do something today that might make him the first, you know, but there's only one way to find <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and of course, um, we were, he was also joined by uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jimmy Allen. I was Jimmy trying to hand that over to you in an amazing way there, but that didn't did. quite work. But I, yes. I think I think he did. <laughs> right, I right, carried that very well. Yeah, I spoke to Jimmy, Jimmy, and uh, Richie on this week's show, um, and it was I think it was really cool just to just just I mean we've grown a lot, man. As we said, you know, they've kind of post there, you know, since the last time we spoke to Richie, you know, we were. We were, you know, just doing this kind of for a bit for a laugh, and then we're about eight months of, of a bit for a laugh down down the road mm-hmm. now, aren't we? And it was a pleasure yeah. to have Richie back on the show, you know, and I was really really excited for for that next stage. You can see the hunger in him, you know, and I hope mm-hmm. people see that when they when they watch the interview. But Ryan, if people are hungry <clears throat> for the interview with Jimmy and Richie, and of course, <laughs> M- misery smile, um, mm-hmm. where can they find that interview? <laughs> people can find that here now. We're here with Richie Heavens and Jimmy Allen of the newly formed Misery Smile. How are we doing, boys? Mm. We are all good. (laughs) Excellent. Yes, we are good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Now, one of the things that we like to do on the show is uh, we like to go back to the beginning. Now, obviously, we've had Richie on before, but um, let's look at the the new chapter, uh, Mm -hmm. obviously, with the new band, Misery Smile. So how did did the band come together in the first place? Uh, should I take that one? Yeah, 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 go. Yeah, because you, you came in a bit later. Um, <laughs> it's one of the, We are one of those bands that, that actually formed during lockdown, and I'm noticing there's a bit of a trend in that. Um, mm. With, I think, a lot of musicians bored, you know, especially ones that weren't particularly in bands at the time, sort of, you know, with, with the, the, not the creation, but, you know, the introduction, like things like Zoom and stuff like that. I think a lot of musicians just started reaching out, reaching out to other musicians and... I, re- I reached out to um, a guy who's not not with us at the moment, but um, a guy from Sheffield called Danny Jaglar um, and said to him, you know, you, you got any songs? And he got back to me and he said, yeah, I've got, um, yeah, I've got these demos. And he sent me some demos and I started, you know, sending them back to him and we liked what the two of us were doing. And as that developed, we thought maybe we should involve a few more people in this. Um, and then me not being from from you know Sheffield and in Barnsley at the moment um he's the one that knew everyone so he reached out and Jimmy I don't even know I don't even know the story of how you actually got involved no, <laughs> like, no, no, you, no, you were just at rehearsal one day <laughs> just turned up yeah no I worked same guy obviously I, I worked with him for years at Sheffield Arena for like the last five years so it, just a mutual friend situation and he's always known I've been in bands for ever since I've known him and he's not been in, I don't know, for some years now. And he's been hinting the whole time to join one of my bands. And I never, <laughs> we'll put it this way, the hints weren't very clear. And then eventually, <laughs> or maybe I'm just daft, you know, whatever. But but then eventually he said, um, do you want to join this new band? We really need another guitarist. Fill it out. And I'm like, try anything, you know. And he eventually then... spray paint it on your drive just to really get the emphasis <laughs> of what he's saying across. Yeah. <laughs> Join my band, but yeah, yeah. no. And it, as soon as I went, you know, fantastic. It just worked out yeah. really well. Yeah. It was, it was, it was good. I mean, we, we again, the same guy sort of brought in the drummer, Sean. Um, I think, I, I think, I'm assuming he knew Brett. I don't know where because Brett's from Manchester, so Brett just appeared, the the bass player. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it's one of those things, you know, when you put in a band together, sometimes people turn up and it's not quite right and you have to keep looking mm. but this, this mm. is really one of those weird ones where it works straight away yeah it was just straight mm. away it was like yeah this is it this this is it and it's been it since and i think that was probably last what do you say jim like last june or july or something like wow. that I think yeah we got, got yeah getting on. so mm. we, we we've been together as a band for may, maybe not that long but for a while now um and we've just been sort of working quietly behind the scenes, letting all the shit that's going on in the world sort of settle down. <laughs> and we just, we kind of felt like now is now is the time, you know? Like, oh, now awesome. we're all allowed outside, we'll go outside. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so here we are. 
Yeah, so we're very excited. Well, I suppose you've all had that um, that time that a lot of bands maybe don't give themselves. You know, I think it's when you have that first yeah. practice and you get excited. I think there's then this kind of pressure book you put on yourselves. Gig. Yeah, yeah, man. Mm, like yeah. book a gig, yeah. start getting out there and stuff. And it's sometimes like that means you have to learn in the moment, you know, and mm. which is fantastic. But at the yeah. same time, the fact you've had this different experience where you've been able to really connect, not just as musicians, but probably as people over that mm. time. And that means when that when that first gig comes, that connection that most people like it took us with me and the boys in rivers a long time to form that connection on stage whereas you've probably already had them awkward moments when you gaze into each other's <laughs> eyes when you've had a particularly good practice <laughs> you know you've kind of got all that out of the way you know so I bet yeah it's, it's, I, I mean you feel really positive about it we do but I think we're all, we're all in sort of agreement now that you know um you can rehearse as much as you want it's getting on stage yeah. is when you really find your it's very different yeah. yeah yeah and I think now we're ready to you know it's like you know, you you can train troops for as long as you want, but it's when they go into battle mm. that you see what they're made of. So I think we're all kind of like a, as a as a as a squad now, ready to go out and play that sort of first game. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And and yeah. see see where we're at. So we we're really itching now to sort of get out because you know we couldn't rehearse the set anymore. We you know we're still writing songs, but we couldn't rehearse the set anymore. Every time we rehearse it, we go. Yeah, sounds the same as last week. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So now <laughs> it's, it's it's time to go out and actually try it in front of people now and wait, you know, for the inevitable bottles that get thrown at you. <laughs> and go, last song don't work. Though. But um, yeah, we're excited to actually get out and play now. I think we're at that stage. But it has been nice to have that little cushion of um, sort of no pressure to go out and play, you know, and, and to really get to know yeah. each other as musicians, I suppose, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's been pretty cool, actually. Mm. So just taking a step back from, obviously, like we've, we spoke, Jimmy, about your introduction to the band and how you went to that. But what about, what we've, we've spoken to Richie before as well, as we said, well, our first guest that we had on Beyond the Vibe with his origin story. But what about yourself, man? How did you get into playing guitar and to kind of, you know, to the point you're at now? Uh, I don't think I know the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> just from being a kid, just been introduced to music by my dad, you know. Uh, mm. straight into blues music clapped and cream all that sort of stuff found blues cool. easy top you name it just wanted to pick up a guitar and did it at a stupidly young age and never put the thing down <laughs> and then i guess i was about 15 16 and my first band and then just continuously sort of been in bands ever since cool mm, and, has, and has it always been sort of we'll get to the to the sound and identity of Misery Smile, we'll keep that as a little package to open up later. But have you always kind of had the similar sort of bands you've that been in, or is this like a new challenge for you? You know, it's yeah, it's kind of kind of because normally I've, I'm it's kind of dirty like bluesy stuff, but I've always liked all kinds of music, you know. So this is the bit just like almost breath of fresh air as well. Songs that yeah. people might actually like to sing along to. <laughs> <laughs> you get that on the website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's the blue, isn't it? Yeah, Songs that people sorted. might like. <laughs> <laughs> the, the beauty of an interview with us, uh, Jimmy, we'll get you some nice quotes on there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh um, so the band was announced, of course, on the 26th of July. Um, what can people expect in terms of like the sound of the band this time? I think, oh God, I mean, it's really hard. Because, like I said, I think because of being in lockdown and just being in the studio, we've kind of like just run free with mm. any idea. You know, if somebody comes in with an idea or there is an idea, then we just go with it. So we, we, we I think, I mean, let's not, you know, dilly dally. It, it's rock, you know, it, it's good old fashioned rock and roll. Mm. But, there are, you know, we got some songs in the set, like Jimmy, you know what I mean? Like Bad Blood that are a bit yeah. different. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we got some like really like left wing sort of like ballads that are like Bon Jovi esque, you know what I mean, heartbreaking ballads. And then we just got your, your sort of rock and roll. But I think just in general, it's just it's just a good old fashioned rock and roll band. Mm. I think um, there, there was a tendency uh, before lockdown, and I, I'm, I'm hoping it's kind of coming to an end now, of a lot of like um, self reflective music that was very sort of deep and meaningful and this is how I'm feeling <laughs> and you know oh I feel my pain and stuff like that um, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all you know but I think the world's kind of crying out now for a little bit of fun again yeah. 
a little bit of entertainment. You know, we've all been locked up for the last two years. There's, you know, 18 months, wherever the fuck it is. Um, and I think people just kind of want to have a good time again. Now you see the pictures of people in clubs and everybody's bouncing around. And I think mm -hmm. now is the time for sort of a rock band to come out that just kind of goes balls to the wall, rock and roll, fucking... Get a beer down. Bang you. your head. Get a beer. Yeah, get a beer. <laughs> bang your head and have a good fucking time. And don't worry too much about what it's about. Mm. You know, um, although I will say in that as the lyricist for, for most of the songs, that there is meaning there if you want to look for it. But for the mm. most part, the show and the and the band is about just, you know, having just having a good time, you know. Um, so I think, yeah, I think people, if they come to the show, they they'll have a good time. I think that's what we're all about. Awesome. No, I agree completely. I mean, me and Ryan talk a lot about this because there's a lot, we feel there's almost like a, a surge at the minute of, of bands that have been particularly successful because they're kind of doing that that fun stuff. I mean, rather mm. like white massive wagons come to mind sort of straight away. Um, we chatted to Jill recently of the Hot Dam, who used mm. to be in the Amorettes, and they and they, she, her big thing was that she felt like it, you know, that people want that now. They want music that's escapism. You know, mm. I always remember mm. Lemmy speaking about um, in an interview when he formed Motred that people work all week. In a, in a job they fucking hate and they get to the weekend and rock music gives them that escape they can meet all with loads of people they love a community the jeans and the leather jacket on and that's it man it. fucking bang the head for about seven hours straight drink a load of booze feel like shit on the sunday and then do it all again the next week yeah you know i mean that, that's what music's all about i mean I've, I've always seen music as an escape um whether or not you want to escape down a black hole of self depression or you want to escape <laughs> to a place where you feel good but music has always been the the conduit of the gate to that place. So um, I think that's, you know, what we're all about is just giving people a place where they can, like I said, you know, there, there's, there's meaning to the songs. I'm, I'm not one, I can't write songs about, um, uh, you know, bang your head or, you know, Jack Daniels and, yeah, and <laughs> girls, 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 even though I love Monty Crew, no offense to them, you know, and stuff. I, I can't write those songs. I have to fight. I do write quite self-reflectively. But I, what I love with this band is that it's sort of written over a, a sort of tapestry of of sort of music you can move to. So, you know, it, it, it ain't sort of, it ain't Alice in Chains. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. you can kind of go like that too. And then if you want to sit down and read what the lyrics about, you might, you know, find something you didn't expect. But that's that's what I, I think is really unique about it. And that's what I, what I like about it. That was cool. It sounds like a strong balance between between both worlds. Mm. You know, which I think it needs to be. Now you touched upon that, the kind of the time you've had during lockdown to kind of, you know, like say get into grips with the set list and you feel like you're ready for that challenge. Has there been any recording done at this point or is that still to come? Record it well, music. Yeah. Have you done anything like demos wise behind the scenes? Are you preparing to record or do you is it literally just been dedicating it to that live experience and wanting to bring that? Well, to no, people? no, we we got the singles coming out uh, next Monday. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. I bet you boys are so excited for that. And in terms of the, the, the picking that that song as your first stamp on the rock world, I mean, what went into deciding that? Because I always think the first single for any band is like the hardest thing to decide because it's your first your first thing you're putting out there and giving to people. I don't know. What do you reckon, Jim? What, what, what? Could have been, you know, it could have been any of them. But the reason we picked the one is because it's, I don't know, it's just like a kick in the teeth, but it's, I don't know you know mm. it's just a good a good time song oh yeah that's a good one that kind of explain it sums us up what we're all about in one i feel song. like it's it probably sums up everything that you, you you've just said richie about that balance between every that party thing and also you know the expression of the band yeah yeah well we 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 record we've recorded three songs at the moment for an ep that's going to come out um awesome and the, you know there was that sit down and still right which one of these do we do we uses the the thing and it's like jimmy said any one of them has got a place any one of them wins um but i think that the the final sort of say came down to the fact that this is kind of how we want everyone to see us because i think they're three kind of different songs yeah as well yeah. um you know you there's there's quite a dark one there's quite a i don't know a, a bit like jimmy you said you know what jimmy used to play a bit of a sort of bluesy kind of you know, dirty mm. song, and then you got My Misery, which is coming out. Um, and I think we all just kind of felt deep down that My Misery was just a good representation of the, the kind of band that, that we are. Yeah. Um, and lyrically, musically, I think, um, yeah, it, it just kind of, we thought, oh, this is, and, and also I think that people will, you know, enjoy it. And it's, it's, um, 
Yeah, I think it, it just won out. I think uh, there wasn't much <laughs> fight about it. It was a gym about who was which one was going to come out. Nah, nah. Then we all kind of went, which one? And then everyone went <laughs> to that one. And we went, oh, yeah, that yeah. one. That's, that's always a good vibe. If yeah, everybody's exactly, pushing, yeah. immediately Same pushing page. on that one. Yeah. 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 But, but, mm. um, um, how do you, obviously we've touched on the uh, the writing process a little bit there, but um, how do you feel it uh, differs from your kind of previous projects, Rich? Um, like, are you are you kind of trying a different writing style, maybe perhaps this um, time around, or not? Not really. No, I, I I will say that it, and I you know a lot of bands say this, but I will say in this, like it 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 is a bit of a collective effort. I think it starts with somebody's idea. And mm. then I, I always find that as like a, the vocalist or the singer, you, you know, the song can't develop until you you kind of know what you want to do with it, you know, your, yourself. And mm. I think that's then a point where people can go, all oh, right, okay. Because you can have a guitar riff that goes... <laughs> but until I go, well, I can't sing over that. I need another bit or whatever, you know. Um, so I think in that sense... Um, it is kind of shaped a little bit around what, what, what I hear in my head that I might want to sing. Mm. Um, but then it kind of just grows from there, really. And I, th I think a lot of the songs, you know, have come a, a million miles away from where they started. And, and you know, and I, you know, I'd say at this point, a lot of them have come from me and, and Danny because we kind of started swapping these demos mm. but like jimmy sent me a yeah before demo everyone the other got day. together yeah exactly but jimmy you sent me one the other day and sean the other day the drummer he kind of just hummed something mm. to us and that's become a song now because he went i've had this thing in my head they go blah blah and he just sang it to us and we recorded it and then that's now become a, a full-blown song so i think if anybody's got an idea you know it, it is always worked on um you can never have too many songs but i mean me personally it's always just like what what does it say to me and then we we go from there but i, I wouldn't say it's not massively different to any other band that i've been in really it, it's you know typical lead singer disease i go no i can't sing <laughs> that bit so you have to change it and that's the end of it so, but um but I, I, what i do love about this band in particular is everyone's so open to everyone else's ideas mm. that's badass it's, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think we've been rehearsing for just under a year or something. I don't think we've had a crossword yet about a song. You know, everyone goes, mm. I want us to try it, you know, and you try it and it either works or it, it doesn't work, you know, and and everyone, you know, Jimmy, I'd like you, you, you're the same, you? You, you come in and you you do your solos, you come in with an yeah. idea and they 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 flourish. Like. That's it. And a lot of the songs, like they were, it was Breath of Fresh Air to come in and have a bunch of songs already written. Mm. I'm sort of jamming along with him and then Jaguar looks at me and he goes, uh, so I'm guessing, oh, this is a solo bit. And he's looking at me going, go on, go on, have a go. And, it's like, go on. and then, you know, the first thing you play sticks. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's a good, yeah. it's a good you know, co-creating vibe. I really like it. Mm. I'm, I'm feeling the positive energy <clears throat> from you, gents. You know, like, I think it's, you can definitely feel like there's that collectiveness and that. And I like the fact that you kind of feel like you can bring anything to it. Because I know from being in a band myself, there's all, I've been in bands where I feel like I can't bring stuff because people mm. criticise it as soon as mm. I put it on the table. And mm. that's a horrible place to be because you there could be, you could bring something that might not be right, but the people involved in the project can can architect that into something that could yeah. be awesome. Yeah. And it's about trusting the people around you and the With family everyone's the band. Input. Yeah, big time, Jimmy. And I think I think that comes across really well. That's what makes a voice. band, though, isn't it? That's why they make each band's unique. It wouldn't yeah. be the same without any particular member because you're no, bringing something. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in a band like that. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to be. It, it to me, it's called a band because it's it's a band. Do you know Collecting what I mean? And, the team. And, and, and yeah, everyone, <laughs> you know, just as important. You know, whether the the drum beat is just as important as the guitar solo or the mm. or the vocal melody. You know, so. Mm. To me, it, it is a collective. And, and what I like in this is I can say to Sean, that oh, Trumpy, do this. Or, you know, Danny can say to Brett, that your bass bit's not quite, or whatever. And nobody goes <gasps> like that. Everyone just. But I goes, like that bit. I'm keeping it. And it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's none of that. Everyone kind of just goes, all right. And at least gives it a go, you know, and then we, we go from there. But um, yeah, I think it, it, it is, you know, Every song has its, you know, embryonic stage where it starts from somewhere. But I think that um, every single one of these songs that's on the CEP has got everyone's name stamped on it somewhere along the lines. And I, I love that. 
yeah that's brilliant mm-hmm. now in terms of like everyone bringing their own sort of individual thing to the band one of the things we like to to chat to musicians about is kind of their identity as a performer on stage you know i always find that when you go on stage you kind of naturally fall into this different character and yeah. a different persona and obviously you've both been in several different bands coming up to this point is and yeah you're preparing to, to get back on stage you know is there any particular influence you'll both be bringing individually on stage with with misery smile is there a different kind of is there any moves or characteristics that you had as a performer before that you'll be leaving behind or anything that you particularly <coughs> want to bring in terms of the energy of the band Jimmy, you take this because I've never been on stage with you in a gig, so I'm curious. <laughs> well, for me, I, I don't know. I've, I've never tried to do uh, anything in particular, you know, like moves or anything like that. It's just how you feel in the moment. And, mm. you know, and anyone who's seen me play a bunch of times know that it's, you know, if it's just a silhouette, they'd recognise stuff I do, kind of, if that makes sense, you know. That's really cool, yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The only difference is if it's the, the more upbeat the song, the louder the song, the more you're going to jump around, you know, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, you, you do have a you do have a stance, Jim, that I, I like on stage. You've got like, power, power like, stance. Yeah, it, it, it's like I would know that was him. Do you yeah. Know what I mean? mm, yeah. If I just saw it in, in a lineup, it's, it's a pretty cool stance. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing that stance. On stage. <laughs> uh, but like I say, you know, it's I not mean, intentional. It's just something you feel. I don't know. If that's yeah, yeah, cheesy, totally. but it is. No, not at all. Man. I mean, I, I mean, no, I'm, I'm just the same in any band you bump me in. I just throw myself <laughs> on stage and hope to entertain, <laughs> you know, with the, the best I can. I always see myself just as a cheerleader on stage. Do you know what I mean? Listen to the song. Listen to the song. You know, that, that's, that's like my role. So, um, yeah, I I just dance around and and do the the usual shit and um, let the musicians behind me, the real musicians, you know, play <laughs> and, and I just try and keep up. <laughs> um, so obviously, uh, the band's still in its early stages, but um, we thought we'd uh, ask a a kind of a hypothetical thing of um, where where do you see the band in like three years time? Like, do you have any kind of targets for you and like? If you could pick one um, between the two of you, like, um, is there like, anything specific? I have one. Jimmy, have you got one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here go. um, I, I genuinely would love to get on download again. Mm. That, that would be a yeah. yeah. mine. That'd be cool. Um, on any stage, in any way, shape, or form. Um, <laughs> My uh, girlfriend Alex went and uh, covered the download pilot as a music journalist um, a, a month or so ago, and you know I've seen some of the backstage footage and and stuff like that that she recorded, and I was just like, oh fuck, man, get me back there. That mm. is the place. Do you know what I mean? So um, for me, yeah, I would I would love to be playing a fairly good slot in that in that festival. In if we're talking three years, then obviously headlining in three years. Yeah, <laughs> Optimistic, <laughs> like it. <laughs> no, but um, no, but I'd love to get back into that that place. That that's a cool fucking place. So um, I think that 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 is like a bit of a, a sub goal of mine. I think is to to try and get there. I think. Um, so yeah, that would be me. I don't know about you, Jim. Go on, Jimmy. You had a bit of time now, brother. Well, <laughs> you go, go one, one personal target for yourself, you know, the, the next three years for the band. Do, do you know what? Just it sound, yeah, again, cheesy, but just for, to, to make, for people to like what we do, for people to hear what we do, you know, mm-hmm. to, to just, to, you know, I don't know, positive feedback, you know, I enjoyed this, blah, blah, blah. Even if it's like someone after a gig, I mean, that happens anyway, but, you know, the, the, that's all I could personally want. I think it's it's a great thing. Maybe that's why I never said like download a thing, but it'd be great. But maybe that's why I've been in so many bands and it's <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, I'm easy. I'll go with the flow. I'm just happy to play, you know. But yeah, no. Jimmy's happy to play. I want to conquer the world. <laughs> <laughs> if the, that would be nice. Works, yeah. Though. If you both wanted to conquer the world, though, maybe it wouldn't work. You know, mm. you've got to have you got to have that nice balance between the two. I mean, I've I've the same with. I mean, I grew I grew up in Donington, man. I went to school mm. in Donington, so that's always been a big thing for me playing mm. playing downloads. You know, and I think some of yourself, Jimmy. In some ways, it's just nice in three years' time to know that. You know, three years is a nice t- timeline. To be fair, sure, to it's a lot of time people, to to give it your all. 
Exactly, and to know that people people still want to come out and see you, and to Absolutely. feel that evolution yeah. as a band, because it's really nice when you see people that come to them first gigs, Definitely. and to see them three years down the line, and for them to still be coming and they've brought the mates and they've brought yeah. the mates mates, and mm. it's building that community Absolutely, around yeah. the band. You know, I think that's a really cool target individually for you both to set yourselves, and I, I think it's definitely doable. Mm. Cool. So uh, the question most fans will be wanting to know: um, obviously, you've got the new single coming out. Um, but have you got any gigs in the pipeline? Uh, not that we will disclose of just yet, um, <laughs> but they are being uh, created. And uh, yeah, once we um, once we're ready to tell, then we will we will tell. But we will definitely be out there very soon. But um, yeah, we, we we will be sort of um, we will be around very soon, but at the moment we're just not ready to tell anybody. So you don't get the exclusive there, boys. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> well, wait. Once Andy Coffin get replies to your email, let us know. And then we'll well, that's what I mean. I mean, he's been a bit quiet at the moment, but I know that he's <laughs> desperate to get back to me. <laughs> it's a busy time. He'll, he'll, he'll get back, man. No, that's cool. We don't. We don't mean to to tease, but like I say, as soon as, as soon as you do come out, me and Ryan, hundred yeah. percent, be be yeah. along for the ride, man. You know, it's exciting. Fantastic. Mm. Um, now, finally, um, we we like to finish on a bit of a hypothetical question. Um, it's a thing that kind of has become a bit of a staple of what we do now, isn't it? But it it pre like when we when we had you on, Rich, it was a, a we believe we didn't even ask it, <laughs> so it's very early days. But uh, if you could tour with one band from the past and one band from the present to tour with, who would they be? Ooh. Go on, Jim. You go go first on that. <laughs> from the past. Mm. To what to support? Uh, yeah, so we've got like one from the past who would they be the headline, Aaron? Would you say? Well, it depends on the band. The the I, the I normally, as the hypothetical promoter at the Overlord, um, <laughs> I normally kind of decide the pecking order. I normally have, have you boys on as first support, um, and then you kind of have the depending on the level of who you pick afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> but there's several answers I could do for that because. <laughs> I mean, the main one being Beatles, but, you know, you couldn't, it, the music wouldn't be the same and whatnot. But so with this kind of music, I guess Aerosmith for me in the past would be mm -hmm. incredible, you know. Cool. Just to be around them and just experience all that and, you know, yeah. live a similar life. You want the drugs know. and the alcohol, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, wants, he, wants the drugs, he wants the drugs and the alcohol. Yeah, which, which era of Aerosmith, the clean like, or the dirty? Well, I don't know. No comment. <laughs> Um, I think past, I would say, I got a good score with my first instinct and the first band that popped in my head was Queen. Mm. I'd, I'd love to just, yeah, I mean, what a fucking audience. And, you know, also what a challenge to have to yeah. go up against <laughs> Queen. You know, um, yeah, that's true. you're never going to win, but sometimes that's, you know, that that's like... The fun of it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I mean. You know, you're on the water. Um, which are which are a queen would you go rich would you go for the like post 1980 when um they kind of went more sort of pop or the the proper 70s sort of stuff no i i gotta be honest i know there's like you know queen hardcore fans that'll kill me for this but i loved sort of like 80s queen and that that's you know the wembley gig the 1980 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, I remember you saying about the crowd and being amazing yeah. immediately I, I thought of the wembley gig you know? that's one of the best gigs i think i've ever seen seen on dvd i was never i wasn't there i'm far too young um, <laughs> but, uh, but, I, but i will say that that was you know that was them they were they were they were fucking kicking ass then and i would love to have opened with them just for the privilege of opening them but uh, not opening for them but also i would just love the challenge to, to go on stage in front of a queen crowd and see if you can make an mm. impact into them mm -hmm. You know that uh, that so for the past that would definitely be right. Yeah, cool. And who's your two modern bands? Mm. I'm what's, really what's into... a modern band? No, I think. All right, I will say this. I there, there is a band at the moment that I've um, and my girlfriend's got me into them, and I I'm like. At first, I was resistant to it, and now I'm I love them. But I so I would love to I would love to have a go with these as well. But uh, they're a band called Creeper, oh, um, cool. and I I just love everything they stand for at the moment. I think um, 
they got cool songs, massive hits. They are very Queen in some respects. Um, and I, I love the theatrics of their sort of performance. Um, and I just, again, I think it'd be another good band to, again, get in front of their audience would be fantastic, but also, you know, to to get a chance to share a stage with a band like that. Because I think they knew they're, they're just doing something a bit different. And I find that I'm really, I'm really all about that at the moment, just looking for the sort of the different sort of aspects of what, what you can do as a band. You know, there's the run of the mill, just do your rock songs. And then there's the theatrics. And I'm starting to get a lot into the theatrics and they, they, they are to me sort of the kings of it at the moment. They, they're fantastic. Everything I, I haven't seen a bad thing from them yet. So um, yeah, I think a, a bank or creeper would be my my selection. Um, we'll, we'll check them out, man. I've got mm-hmm. old man's up. I've not heard a creeper, so yeah, no, I'll check them out. What about yourself, Jimmy? Um, <coughs> Blackberry Smoke, actually. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I love, I love yeah. Blackberry Smoke, man. And there's another band you probably I don't know Nick Nick Perry and the Underground Thieves. Yeah, oh, brilliant guitarist. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it uh, used to be just, used to be a Silver Tide, didn't it? Yeah, Back true. Yeah. Day, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's why I've heard of them. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Great, man. The Silver Tide in itself, fantastic. Like, you know, that slight book cherry vibes, I guess. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But that the his new band, I, I'm absolutely so into that, you know. And the, you know, the Black Bridge Bill got all that like Whiskey Myers, all the southern uh, country stuff. I love it all. Yeah. It's great. That's very very much my taste as well, bro. Yeah. Cool. I'm well into that. Yeah. Nice one, boys. Right. I mean, you fucked me here because we've got like four things that I've got to work <laughs> on a set list. Right. So we've got misery, misery smiler <laughs> opening. Right. Okay. Sorted. <laughs> then we've got um, we've got is it Creeper? Yeah. We've got Creeper, and then we'll have Nick Perry and the Nick Perry and the Bad Seeds. Yeah. Right. So we've got a festival bill. Right. Okay. And then we've got we've got kind of a split headliner between Aerosmith and Eighties Queen. We yes. good? Fantastic. Pretty that'd, be, that, that'd be fucking fierce. That would. <laughs> Fuck it out. That'd be sick. It would be awesome. Trust me. Yeah. Nobody will ever want to go home. Everyone will take cyanide and just die. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will live anymore. Be you peach. No. You peach. You're done. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. took, took, took a nice bit of a dark turn at the end. You know? <laughs> <laughs> see your son? Nah. This. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> That's good. I love it. We'll call it the cyanide tour. Quite yeah. <laughs> well, Creeper have got a song called Cyanide, so I think that's where that's Fuck called. it out. Right, we'll get, uh, we'll get in touch with fuck, fuck Andy Copping off. We'll get in touch with Creeper. We'll yeah. get Sparrow Smith on the phone. Um, Queen might be a bit hard, but I'll, I'll do what I can. Oh, yeah. We do for that one. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Fuck it. It's going to be a weird night, this is. Yeah. Just, 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 just sport in a barn. Like, it's going to happen. Is everyone, everyone ready? It's going to be sick, this is. You know it. You know it's so four, t- four tickets, but yeah. it's going to happen. It's going to be all right. Right. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, boys. Really no worries. Really time. Having us. No, it's fucking it's honestly, can't. Again. Both of us are really excited to hear to hear yeah. Smile smile and, and that next evolution. It's great to see you again, Richie, and great to meet you, Jimmy. Yeah, you too. Yeah, man. Cheers. So, so Thank you. For those that haven't jumped on the train already, make sure you go to Mystery Smile's socials and get involved. Yes. And when they come out, make sure you experience their assault on the rock word. And the new single comes out Monday, so make sure you don't miss it. Cheers, mm. guys. Appreciate it. Lovely. Excellent. Cheers. Lovely. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Later, boys. Thank you. Right, beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, boys. See you soon. <laughs> So that was Richie Heavens and uh, Jimmy Allen of Misery Smiles. I really enjoyed that, man. Love the mm. excitement. Yeah, you know, yes. That. You can really get a buzz. We spoke to a few people, obviously, Jill, hot damn, you know, of, of what it feels like when you start a new band, you know, mm. because it's, you know, especially for, it's much different in Richie's situation because he's, you know, he had, um, was it Fragile Things, the band that yeah. kind of the The, the, so then, the, the latest was, previous one yes. is Fragile Things. Um, he's had a few different things pop up, hasn't he, over the years yeah. since Basement. But obviously, Heaven's Basement and Road Stars, what most people know him for. Mm. And um, and it feels like he really believes in in this next step. You know, what did you think of the interview, man? Yeah, it was really good. Um, there, there was like a real hunger, a real vibe. Um, like, you know, I loved where he talked about, um, you know, he, he'd, he'd love to get back to download. Mm. You know? um you know there's just a there's that thing of like you know i want to i want to just do what i enjoy doing yeah you can see you that's know. who he who he is and who he yeah, wants to return to be you know i mean i always loved him as a as a front man because he just felt he just looked like he should be there 
you know, mm. he carries it. We spoke about um, Shane with Crows before, and I think Richie's got yeah. that in him. You know, I, I quite liked. I mean, we spoke a little bit about it. I, mean, yeah, I liked his feeling that he wants to bring something else to the rock world. You know, maybe now's the mm. time for 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 positive and the music to escape to. You know, maybe like most bands, he's, he's seeing that and thinking, you know, I can. I feel that I can do that, and I can bring something different to the rock world, and I, I think that's really cool. <laughs> You know, mm. reminded me a little bit. I don't know if it's just because Jimmy looks quite a lot like the guitarist out of Butterside. But I was getting, to, I <laughs> yes, was getting that's this, very true. I was, yeah. yeah, I was getting this real Patrick, you know, with Richie Butterside because mm. that that was very positive as well when we spoke to Butterside. You know, it was that similar energy. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, the the new single comes out Monday. Um, very excited. That, yeah, you know, I think you can feel they're excited about it as, as, as we discussed in the interview, it's, you know, that's their, their first impression that they're putting out there as, as the band. So it's, um, it's an exciting time. Right. So uh, that is it for this week on um, beyond the vibe. Uh, if you like what we're doing, um, you can uh, subscribe of course, and uh, uh, you, you'll keep, keep up with uh, everything that we're doing. Obviously we have the podcast come out every Saturday from 10 a.m. And if you want to find out what guest we have, um, you can uh, follow us on Facebook. And uh, on a Wednesday from 10 a.m., uh, we reveal who said guest is. We do indeed, Mr. Vase. If you click the bell at the bottom of this video, if you're watching on YouTube, you make sure you never miss an episode. As Mr. Vase said, we have different guests every week. And the mm. show comes out on a Saturday at 10 a.m. And if you if follow us on the social medias, you can make sure you never miss finding out who that guest is because it's almost 100% one week at the very least, maybe sometimes going to be somebody that you'd like to hear some nonsense spoke about. You know, we pride ourselves in doing an in-depth discovery of a person's origins as well as what's coming next, you know, and we mm. hope you've enjoyed us. And yeah, support, come along and support the vibe. Yes. See you next week. Okay.